Hey, what's up, Meatballs? Mr. Meat Hook here. You know what? It's been a long time. I mean, a very long time. Like, going on two and a half years, I believe, since I've done any comic book videos. I stick mainly to horror now, and so it's fitting that I would bring you a video with my favorite horror comics in my collection. This is about 25. I don't know. I just grabbed, like... Some of them, I really dig the story. Some of them, I just really dig the cover. Some of these aren't 100% horror, but they're definitely horror-esque. You know, definitely have horror elements to them. Um, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So from Avatar Comics, we have... Uh, my favorite adaptation that they did of any of the horror comics they did, because they've done, oh God, they I know they did Nightmare on Elm Street, they did Leatherface, they did uh, Friday the 13th. I mean, obviously Jason's my homeboy. Always has been, always will be. They did, and I am a fucking sucker for Uber Jason. They actually did a two-issue series with Jason versus Jason X. These are the metallic variant covers. Believe that there are 5,000 of each of these. Don't quote me on that though, it could be wrong. Somewhere in my collection, I also have um, of number one, one that came with a poster and it's signed and that's one of a thousand, but I didn't grab that one because I actually like the covers on these better. Jason and, Jay and Uber Jason facing off, I really dig it. Then here's issue number two, also with the metallic cover. Love them. And then we have Marvel's Dead of Night number one. Love this fucking cover. Really, really dig it. And then this series only lasted about a year, maybe a year and a half. I don't remember if it came out every month or not. But this is the final issue. It's number 11. Really like the cover on this. I'm kind of a sucker for Scarecrows. And I think he looks cool. And this next one, you might, you might be like, dude, what the fuck? This is one of them that I literally bought just for the cover. Um, one of my favorite comic artists is Francisco Francavilla. And he did a series of variant covers for Afterlife with Archie, which is Archie, it takes place in Riverdale, but it's zombies. And he did this awesome cover swipe, or not cover swipe, but he did this awesome tribute to The Shining for Afterlife with Archie number eight. Fucking love it. And then after that, we have a comic adaptation of House 2, the second story. This is a fun comic right here. Um, House 2, I mean, it's not a great film, but it is fun. I dig it. And the comic follows it pretty closely. And then we have Legion of Monsters. Again, this is one of them that's not really like horror per se. It's a mashup with um, Werewolf by Night. Morbius, Man-Thing, and Ghost Rider, but I like it. This is actually Marvel premiere number 28. Then we got Puppet Master number one with the photo cover of Blade. What can be said about Puppet Master that hasn't already been said? Nothing, but I think it's a cool cover. Then we got Giant Size Spider-Man number one with Dracula. Um, it's a good comic. Unfortunately, Dracula and Spider-Man never actually face each other in this. Dracula is the villain, but the only time they ever share a cell together at all is um, when Peter is Peter Parker, or when Spider-Man is Peter Parker, not when he's Spider-Man. They never actually battle each other, which was very disappointing. And this one here, uh, I have this entire run, but I really like this cover. It's from Arrow Comics. It's Dead World number four. 
and dig the shit out of this zombie cover. Another one that's not really horror, but horror-ish. But we got Adventure into Fear number 20, I believe. Yeah, number 20 with Morbius, the living vampire. I am pretty excited for the Morbius movie that's coming out. I think it's Jared Leto playing Morbius. Definitely excited, though. We got Chamber of Chills, number one. Love this comic. This is one of those that fall, like, across the run, it, it does horror, it does fantasy, it does sci-fi. So it's not 100% horror, but I dig the whole series. All right. One of my favorite comics of all time, along with one of the greatest horror TV shows ever, Dark Shadows. This is, I believe, number two. I'm pretty sure it's number two. It's from 1969. Dig it. All right, what's next? Okay. Got Haunted Horror number one. I fucking love this series. This series reprints uh, the old 50s horror comics as compilations. Absolutely love this. I mean, I can't afford the 50s horror comics. Those things, like, even in shit condition, they, you know, 50 bucks and up. I don't have that kind of money to spare on a comic, so I'm more than happy to get these. Although, interestingly, this one is worth like 50 bucks, and I think I paid five for it, so I got lucky. But yeah, the comics and or the the stories in this go from like 50 to 52 or 53. Great stories in here, guys. We got House of Secrets number 88. Dig that badass cover. I love the haunted house in the background. Gargoyles. It's just a great fucking cover. Got DC's Unexpected number 154. Another great cover. Um, I don't believe I've actually read this one. The great thing about these, though, is like a lot of the, the DC and Marvel comic from the 60s and 70s is each one's a standalone story, so you don't have to worry about, oh, shit, I don't have all of them. It's cool if you don't. Got Monster of Frankenstein, number one. Great comic, guys. Great comic. I wish this series would have lasted longer. I think it only went... Oh, if I remember right, about 20 issues. It didn't go long enough. Great, great stuff, though. Then we have George A. Romero's Empire of the Dead, number one. At one point in time, this was like a $40 comic. Uh... They were going to do a TV series on Empire of the Dead. Pretty sure that's dead in the water now. No pun intended. But I'm pretty sure it's not happening anymore. And I, I mean, Romero being gone now may very well be a contributing factor to that. But it would have been a great show. But it's not happening. So what do you do? Okay. Chamber of Darkness number one. Again, just a great cover. I love it. Okay, winding down now to some of the some of the, like my top favorites. Um, uh, There's a really underrated horror comic that Image did called Spread. Super, super, super underrated. I don't even know if it's still going or not. <coughs> But this is the cover swipe for the first appearance of Michonne from The Walking Dead. A um, little tribute to that on here. This is the, I think it's Third Eye Blind or something like that, comics exclusive. I forget. I'll have it down here. I don't remember exactly which comic place this was exclusive to. Yeah, Third Eye Comics. Third Eye Comics. Love this cover. And if you haven't read Spread and you can find like some e-comics for free for number one, check it out. I think you'll love it. Definitely one of my favorite comics of all time. Okay, and then a lesser known but kind of known one um, is Zombie Tramp by Dan Mendoza. 
The local comic shop here, because we only have one now, the local comic shop here uh, is staffed entirely by the hearing impaired. Everyone there is either completely deaf or nearly deaf. Uh, you pretty much either need to speak American Sign Language or communicate with them through, you know, uh, messages on your phone. But it's called Sphinx Comics, and this is their exclusive cover. There are only a thousand of these, and I was there the day that it dropped, and Dan Mendoza was there doing free signings on them, so that was pretty awesome. He did do a blank sketch of, or a blank of cover of this, and he was doing sketches for 50, which for him is super cheap, but I didn't have it to spare. Now we're winding down to my absolute favorites. Okay. So we've got Tomb of Dracula number one. Great. Just this whole series is great, guys. Great comic. Um, I have all of them except for number 10, which is the first appearance of Blade. You know Blade. I'm sure you know Blade. They made a few movies about it. I think there's a TV show coming as well. Got some guy named Wesley Snipes. Yeah, kind of known. But yeah, Blade started in uh, Tomb of Dracula. He was in number 10. This is the first issue. I love this comic. We got Tomb of Dracula number two. I love it. It's so hard to find this one in really good condition. This one here is pretty decent. The black cover makes it really hard because a lot of times it's chipped. Mine is, I want to say it's about a seven. I haven't gotten it graded, obviously, but I would say it's about a seven, which is pretty decent for this particular one because the black chips really easy. Great issue, great comic in general. We got issue number 51, which is the death of Blade. Great comic as well. Check out the series if you can, guys. I mean, I would suggest getting it as an e-comic if you can because the full run of comics is going to cost you at least a thousand bucks. Because this one here goes for, if I remember correctly, no, I didn't pay anywhere near this. I got it for about 60, but I think it goes for about 300 to 350 bucks. The first appearance of Blade goes for about 50 to 100 more than that. This one here goes for about 100. It's, it's a very expensive series, guys, but totally worth it if you can get a hold of them. Yeah, but that's why I suggest the digital comics, which I don't normally suggest, but there's times where it's a better option. Okay, now we have Marvel Spotlight on Werewolf by Night. This is Marvel Spotlight number two. This is the first appearance of Werewolf by Night. Fucking love this book, guys. I got this from, well, a friend picked this up for me from uh, San Diego Comic-Con. Excuse me. And I want to say 2015 or 2016. I forget which. But my friend Chris picked this up for me from San Diego Comic-Con. It was like super cheap. It was like 60 bucks. It's like a $400 comic. Now in the condition this one's in, probably 125, 150. Still got a great fucking deal on it. This is one that I picked up. This one is definitely just a reader copy. It is beat to shit, but it's Werewolf by Night number one. I do have the entire run of Werewolf by Night except for... I think it's number 28. It's the first appearance of Moon Knight. That's a thousand dollar fucking comic, guys. I don't have that kind of money. No way. So I've had to resort to finding it online to read it, but I have read the entire run of Werewolf by Night. This is absolutely my favorite horror comic series of all time. Check out Werewolf by Night. You won't be disappointed. <clears throat> and then this one here, you're going to say, dude, that's not horror kinda is. Not 100%, but it's definitely horror-esque. We got Ghost Rider number one, which is not the first appearance of Ghost Rider. That is Marvel Spotlight, I believe, number four or five, something like that. That's like a thousand dollar comic as well. This one's like 100, 120. I didn't pay that, I don't think. I don't think I would pay a hundred. This also came from San Diego Comic-Con. So thanks to my buddy Chris for picking that up for me. Definitely appreciate that. But yeah, guys, 
These are my favorite horror comics. Um, thank you so much for listening to me ramble for the last 15 minutes. I do appreciate that. Um, if you want to see me do more videos like these or review horror comics or something like that, let me know. I know it's been a long time since I did horror comics. And yeah. But let me know if you want me to do some. Uh, that is going to be all, guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, kick the like button of the dick like a chick. Stay cool, stay sexy, just like me. Deuces. <laughs>